Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Play Morrowind. We are outside the um, Salothran Ancestral Tomb where we looted a bunch of corpses and did some grave robbing and it was all very nice because we got a big old set of um, expensive and exquisite and extravagant rings and things. Very nice. Uh, I was also ambushed by a diseased Nyx Hound and a blighted Nyx Hound as soon as I exited the building, which was just kind of a bit of a shock. <laughs> as you can see, my health is a bit low at the moment as a result of that, but never mind. I don't need the Amulet of Star Vision on, him, on, him, on any more. So let's get rid of that. Um, yeah. So I wasn't expecting that, but hey. Um, let's drop a quick save. Okay, so we are continuing on our journey to Gnesis, to the next. Uh, pilgrimage shrine thing. Um, people have asked, would Fathis rob an ancestral tomb because he's a Dunmer? Um, and the answer is fuck yeah. <laughs> he just did, didn't he? And he's done it plenty of times before in this LP. Um, yeah, Fathis don't give no shits about tradition and honor and ancestors and things like that. He's gonna rob their graves if it means he gets more money. Uh, da -dum -dum -dum. Sure, he's a member of the Tribunal Temple, but that doesn't mean he actually believes in that shit. It's just another means of furthering his own cynical ambitions. So, uh, let's see. Alright, we need to go this way. So, let's follow this road. Yes. So, I think I've mentioned this before, but I swear, one of the deliberate things in Morrowind was how low the roads lie in the ground with all the stuff on either side. It's just to sort of mask the fact that they, uh, they didn't have distant terrain in this game originally. It does, it, to, be, to be fair though, it does make the world feel a bit bigger. If this was all flat, it would look very small indeed, I think. Oh, we've got a Kaguti guarding a signpost for whatever reason. We might not need to go that way, though, so. Except apparently we do! Hooray! Let's go battle a Kaguti, then. Uh, let's use Mother's Ring again. And... Demon Tanto, which is getting a lot of use today. Um... It would appear. Come on then. Useful bit of kit though, can't complain. A bound longsword would be even better though. But uh, we're working towards that. Nexus, this way. Right then. Yes. Plod, plod, plod. We go through the wilderness. Let's see if we can climb up a bit just so we can get a bit of a view of where we are. Alright, well, there's the sea. Um, there's Red Mountain in a very faint distance over there. It's a bit foggy, so. People say to me, um, hello, Scrub. People say to me, like, I'm surprised to see a veteran Morrowind player running everywhere and wasting all this fatigue. And you have a point, but the, 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 the thing is, guys, if we, if I just walked everywhere, we'd be here forever. A deal anyway. Oh, short blade increased to 60. Sweet. What's our level like now? Two of, two of ten. Yeah, we did level up not long ago, to be fair. Oh, I've also been told I'm not leveling efficiently enough. <laughs> Go 
sod off, frankly. I do not care about leveling efficiently. I just don't. Chokeweed. That's something I do care about. Chokeweed. <laughs> um... But, you know, that's just one of those things. When you put videos on YouTube, there will, there will always be one person who says you are not doing X, Y, Z efficiently enough. Get good scrub. Okay, alright, we've we've arrived at Nisus, alright? It's just from the opposite direction from which I thought we would. There's a big old dumb stronghold over there. Might check that out in a bit. Oh, uh, what? 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 Oh, it's one of you. Yeah, see, I mean, this is not a big deal. You know, I've got no fatigue, but I'm still able to kill the next hand of the rat and stuff like that pretty efficiently. Um, I have restore fatigue potions after all for a reason, should I need them. Uloth Lagdum. Hello. Officer of the Imperial Legion, move on. Fine. What do you have to say about orcs? Out of curiosity. They call us barbarians because we are brave in war and we laugh at hardship, but we have earned our citizenship by service in the legions, and we are as civilized as any race. We make the f finest weapons and armor in the world, and our warriors are the bravest and toughest in Tamriel. Good for you. Jesus and cool. Hmm. Oh, this is all new. Poke around. Maybe we can steal something. Who knows? A nice long sword will do the trick. Hound meat, also good. Imperial short sword. Close, but no cigar. Thrust 2 to 16. It's better than this. I might take it if I don't find a long sword anyway. Again, just because I need something to, to use instead of the Tanto, because it's expensive as hell to repair that thing. Uh, not much to see here, is there really? Fine, I'll pinch that short sword for now. I can always just sell it if needs be, so. It's not very much. In fact, I'll equip it. There we go. Not bad. Get the job done. It's also made of steel, which makes it very durable, which is good. Um, compared to silver weapons or glass weapons, for example, which in this game degrade very, very quickly. No, I would like, though, some adamantium weapons. I'd like some adamantium armor for that matter, but it's medium armor, so... It's not going to be something we're wearing, I don't think. Unless we get to that point in the game, which you often do at Morrowind, where you've got so much ridiculous, crazy amounts of money that you can basically just train your miscellaneous skills just for the just for shits and giggles. Um, I did that once. I played a pure mage character, got him to about level 30 or 40, and had so much money, I was just like, right, I'm going to try myself in blunt weapons and medium armor. And I did. <laughs> I like that that's an option though, I mean that's good. And the fact that it's an option as well without breaking the leveling of the game, you know. Um, like how in, in Skyrim, if, once you get to like level 20 or 30, if you try to start leveling a different weapon type, like uh, for example in Skyrim LP I've been wanting to do two-handed weapons but can't because if I start leveling in those then I'll get, you know, butt-fucked by the game's leveling system. Um, Whereas in this game, it doesn't matter. Miscellaneous skills don't advance your level. You can just train them up to your heart's content and it won't actually advance your level and then therefore break the game. Um, so, Nisus, here we are. I always thought you two were twins then, but you've got different haircuts. You're a temple person. Hello. Mandos Darren. This is Gnesis, Fatha Sylvan. Just a little mining village on a trade route. I'm Mandos Darren. Is there something specific I can help you with, or are you just looking for a little advice? Tell me about Gnesis. 
It's a small agricultural village on the Owada Samzi, with a prosperous little egg mine. We sit on the caravan route to Aldrun with a silt strider at service, and traders come through here often. Like any small outland caravan village, it has a market, the Ganesis Temple, and a trade house. The Medak Trade House. Unlike most outland villages, there's a Death's Head Legion garrison in Ganesis, and pilgrims come to see the Mask of Vivek at the Ganesis Temple. Speaking of which, tell us about the Ganesis Temple. It's the only shrine in Ganesis. Um, pilgrims visit the temple to pray before the Mask of Vivek, a holy relic. The temple maintains a hostel for pilgrims and travellers, and provides the other services common to, uh, at any small shrine. Mask of Vivek. The Lord Vivek's Ash Mask is a holy relic displayed within the shrine of the Ganesis Temple here. Pilgrims travel from all over Morrowind to view this sacred artifact. It is one of the pilgrimages of the Seven Graces as the Shrine of Justice. Please feel free to examine or pray before the mask, but do not attempt to touch it. In the days of fire, when Dagoth Earth has crept back into Red Mountain and awakened it, Vivek led refugees here as they fled the Ashen Blight. Weary, they rested here a while. When Vivek awoke, he found himself and all his followers encased in casts of grey ash. Frozen like a sleeping statue and unable to free himself or help his people, Vivek was filled with despair. Vivek's tears weakened his ash cast. Uh, he tore the ash from his perished followers, breathed life into their lungs, and cured them of the blight. This is Vivek's heroism. His tender heart provides strength when his might fails. Thus, the shrine here is called the Shrine of Justice, and the sacred artifact remnant of his ash cast called the Mask of Vivek. I will gladly tell you of the pilgrimage procedure here for the Shrine of Justice, Layman. You must stand before the three-sided stone trialith and read the inscription. When you address the shrine, it is customary to leave a potion of cure common disease as a token of your respect for justice. Suitable potions may be purchased here. Homemade potions are not acceptable. You will then receive a blessing, and the blessing of the shrine lasts at least half a day. Yeah, good stuff. All right then. Hello, traders. Think these guys are? Yep. What do you offer? Not much. Really? Not much this useful. I need to find someone to buy all these rings off me. I'm going to opening. I need to enchant an item or create some sort of resist magic spell, don't I? So I can use those boots of blinding speed. That's something to get about that. Trollbone Right Bracer. Oh, cool. There's a full set of Trollbone armor in this game now. By the looks of things, that's pretty neat. Um, it used to be the case where you only just got the Trollbone helmet and that was it. So. Hmm. Exquisite ring. Iron helmet, steel helmet. God, you know it's been a ridiculously long time since I ever played a, a character in Morrowind with, with heavy armor skill. It really has. I mean, good god. I mean, normally I pick medium armor. In fact, 90% of the time I'd say I pick medium armor. The, re the remaining 10% I probably pick light armor. Never heavy. <laughs> I remember when I first played this game. Like my one of my, f my one of my initial goals was to just get a suit of steel armor because I thought it looked awesome. And it was actually remarkably difficult to get a full suit of steel armor. You couldn't buy the whole thing in just sort of one specific place. You had to hunt around all over the place. But anyway, cancel, repair. See you later, it's 131 GP already just to repair this thing. It's expensive. Mm. Moving on. You're a general sort of trader, aren't you? Net the salt. Well, <laughs> um. Would you like these rings? Oof, maybe not all of them, because apparently you don't have that much money. Salamax. There we go. Right, well, that's some of them sold off. Yeah, I imagine that the merchants here aren't terribly wealthy, are they really? No. Um, have an extravagant ring, and have some expensive ones. Maybe another exquisite one. Oof. 
That'll do. Alright, then that's a bit more money. Um, what's next? Make some potions once my fatigue's back, I suppose. Uh, yes, Yashnars grow Ufthamp. Alright, pleased to meet you. Well, let's go to the shrine, I suppose. Um, ooh, a weapons merchant. Ah, you have long blades. Barter. Let's see. Oh, a silver longsword is tempting, but on the other hand, it's, um, I'd have to spend it. I have a heck of a lot of time repairing it. Um, maybe a steel broadsword? Maybe a steel claymore. Uh, that's tempting. It's really heavy, though. It is tempting. If I'm gonna go long blade, why not go the whole freaking hog? And it's not as if I'm using shields anyway, is it? So. Steel claymore. Oh, I don't know though. I mean, there are some really badass claymores in this game. Two handed swords, like, really freaking awesome. Like, they, they, they do absurd amounts of damage, but I just. I don't know. A broadsword or a longsword I can see without this using, but a claymore it just seems a bit like a bridge too far. I mean, he's an old man, it's Fathis. He's not what he once was. Um, I don't know if he's got the physical strength to go charging around with a massive claymore, you know? Uh, as much as I like two ended weapons in this game, on account of the ludicrous damage they do, as I said. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Notice, by the way, that some of the weapons this guy's selling are not actually in full condition. Some of them are quite badly damaged, which will be one of the reasons why they're quite cheap. Like this one here, for example. Um. They're obviously second-hand, <laughs> you know. So... Alright, um... Yeah, I'll have a steel broadsword, and I'll give you this imperial short sword in return. That'll cost me 24 gold. Now I want you to repair it. So another 22. There we go. Yeah, that's more my speed, really, I think. I I just cannot see Fathis running around with a massive two-handed claymore. And believe me, the two-handed swords in this game are huge. Um, so... They're more like fucking Zweihanders than Claymores, really, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's alright. That's more... Of course, the sword nerds, of which I proudly count myself one of them, one among them, will say, Oh, this is not a broadsword. There's no such thing as a broadsword. It's an arming sword. And yes, you're quite right. It's an arming sword. I know, but whatever. The game wants to call it a broadsword, and therefore, so shall I. Right. Yeah, this will do in a pinch for killing rats and things. Alright, so... Ooh. I'm disappointed. Anything with... Uh, no. <sighs> um, he hasn't noticed me, has he? Well, there he has, apparently. Because the icon has disappeared. Yep, hello. I was going to try and nick something off his shelf, or maybe... No, I can't get into that. Bugger. Uh, it's really weird. Like, sometimes the, the sneak icon disappears, even if you are actually undetected. It's buggy, and it's a mess, but whatever. Um, See, now it's back again. Except he's facing this way, so forget it. Right. Hello. Shrine of St. Realms. Shrine of St. Lothus. Someone donated an egg to the St. Lothus. Okay. Cool. What we got here? Cruel Viper Stars. Nah. That, though. 
this, please. Some baskets now. Right then. So, here we are. Ah, right, yes, a couple of ordinators, jolly good. This is Vivex Ash Mask, value 500, owned. Um, here it is, and here's the here's the trilith thingy, Shrine of the Mask. So, all the donate our potion of cure disease. Thank you for your justice, Lord Vivek. I shall be neither cruel nor arbitrary. Vivek, <laughs> do you think earns the love, trust, and respect of our people? <laughs> yes, and if you um, activate the thing again... There you go. There's the real Ash Mask. Worth 20,000. That's just a fake. This is the real one. Hearing Genesis, Vivek made a potion to cure a villager who had fallen ill but could not pay for the healing of the temple. Vivek promised that the temple would always cure those who could not pay and left his sacred mask here as a sign of that promise. That contradicts a bit the story of why we're supposed to be here, actually. I wonder if that's deliberate or not. Doors of the Spirit. It's another valuable book. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so then. That's about it for here. Yeah, see right here, this is a perfect example of why it's not worth bothering to record Morrow in the 60 FPS. Yeah, we're back on that sort of subject again. Because right now, I'm getting 22 FPS. <laughs> Pointing in this direction, I'm getting 22 frames per second. So, yeah. It's just because it's an old game, which is running on a very old engine, which has had a bunch of graphical effects and stuff injected into it, and the poor thing just can't cope. I'm not even sure if Morrowind's a 64-bit application, it probably isn't, which is one of the reasons why it's so clunky when it comes to graphics enhancements mods. Uh, anyway, so, what now? I'm trying to think, is there anything else to do around here? I believe this is the place where you can join the Imperial Legion if you want to. We obviously don't want to, but... Um... Yeah... It's a bit sort of a bit of a dead end this place, isn't it? Um, backwater town. So ooh, we cast on mysticism thingy a few times. Why not? Oh, and I've got since I've got full fatigue right now, I might as well do some potion making. So let's do hound meat. Oh, disease hound meat. I did not want to pick that up. I did by accident. Never mind. Choke weed. There we go. Now let me just go grab a container so that sorts itself out. So I don't have a ridiculous stack of potions that aren't stuck together. There we go, yeah. Nice. Okay, so. Might as well check the book again. What's next? Call Cave, the Shrine of Valor. That would be the next one, wouldn't it? Yeah, because we just did the Shrine of Justice. Alright then, so. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, by the way, viewers, I'm a bit bunged up today. Don't really know why. Thanks, hay fever or something. But anyway. Within the coal cave, Vivek fought a battle with the Ruddy Man, the father of the Dreg. When he defeated the Ruddy Man, Vivek spared his life on the condition that Ruddy Man and his children would give up their tough hides to serve as armour for the Dunmer. The Shrine of Valor is inside the Coal Cave, a cavern on the sea coast, west of the ancient stronghold of Barandus, and south of Gnesis. The cave mouth faces south towards the sea, and is marked by a large, natural arch of stone. The region is wilderness, and finding the cave mouth can be difficult. Drag within the cave itself are fearsome enemies, only experienced and capable adventurers should attempt to reenact the epic battle with the Drag in the cave. 
Drag wax may be bought at the temple in Gnesis. When you address the shrine, it is customary to leave a portion of drag wax as a token of Vivek, Vivek's victorious struggle with ruddy man. So there you go. Alright then, well. Yeah, let's go get some drag wax then. <laughs> Glad I read that here before wandering out of town. Oh, hello. Didn't see you here. You also do weapons and things. Uh, none of it. None of it. I really need though. So, yeah. Uh, could I sell you anything though? No, you don't buy that item. I'm not surprised, to be honest. I wonder if there's anyone I could sell this book to. Probably not. I don't see any bookshops around, so uh... yeah, forget it. Right, this fella looks like he might have some drag wax because he's got potions and things. And what sort of spells? Cool. Drag wax. There we go. It's a bit dear. Fifty gold each. I would not be surprised if that was deliberate on account of it being a necessary pilgrimage item. Bloody temple. They're as bad as I am. <laughs> uh, what else have we got here? Um, reflect. Blood gift. Seren's gift. Cure poison on touch. Nah. I like a cure poison on self, frankly. Cure common disease for one sec on self? Nah. It's all restoration stuff, which we can't do. I need to remind myself of that. Stamina. Restore fatigue. Heal companion. That's a bit of a funny spell, really, that one, because if you're low on fatigue, the chances are you're not going to be able to cast it successfully <laughs> in the first place, so... Um... Yeah, heal companion will be useful. It's very cheap. I'll get it anyway, just just to just to be just to make sure, just to see, I guess, if it if it works, if I can cast it. Heal companion? No, 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 no. I might be able to make a really shitty scaled down version of it in spell making, perhaps that I can cast. But never mind. It was only seventy gold. It was worth a, worth a punt. Hello. Oh. You're not a person, you're just a random, whatever. You look like you might be a service provider. I just sound like he provides broadband connections or something, but... <laughs> um, yes, alright then, so... The Cold Cave is where we must go next. Which is right there, to the south. So... that way. Alright then. In fact, let's go via this handy bridge over here, which I don't think was in the original game. And uh, we might visit this stronghold over here, which I think is called Barandas. Is that what the book said? I believe it's, it, it is. We'll probably get completely destroyed by whatever's there, but strongholds tend to have a lot of high-level stuff in them. But, um, you know, it's worth a try. It's not like we're playing Iron Man or anything. I can afford to just wander in there, get killed, and then leave. What is... Oh, it's a scrib. So what the hell is that thing? Yes, okay then, well, what have we got? We got a Nyx Hound. Good practice on the, uh... The old longsword skill. Oh, and a blighted one. Okay, now I probably ought to switch to something I'm a bit more skilled with than you, because blighted Nick's hands are actually quite tough. See? Look at my health. There's Mother's Ring. Mother's Ring makes it all better. She makes the, the owies go away. You know what, I'm not disposing of the Blighted Nyx Hound. I don't want it coming back. Um, this looks like a regular Nyx Hound though, so that's a little easier to deal with. In fact, a lot easier to deal with. Come on then. <laughs> oh man. Having low weapon skill in Morrowind is just the best. 
Alright then. Well, I think... Let's, let's actually let's do some hotkey assigning. Uh, we can delete you. We can delete you. Let's make number two... Our steel broadsword. There we go. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's these two. Ah, oh, my amulet of mighty blows. I need to actually use that from time to time. It would certainly help. Now, what are you? Are you a regular next hound? Are you a blighted next hound? Are you a diseased one? Oh, we're looking at mainland Morrowind. Off in the distance there, and sadly we can't go there because there's nothing to see. It's all just alpha terrain with no NPCs or quests or anything. Ugh. It's a shame because honestly, it looks. I've I've had a look at the terrain. I had a little, you know, butcher's look at it, and. Uh, it is pretty cool, but yeah, it's just sadly completely depopulated, so there's no point in going there. Within the Let's Play, certainly, anyway, because it would just be weird. It's like, suddenly, Pappas went across the sea to the mainland of Morrowind, where there were no people anywhere. <laughs> 